This is the Greyhorn Pagans Podcast, a podcast hosted and produced by the tribe of the Greyhorn Pagans, the frontrunners in the Pagan Revival. On this podcast, we discuss all matters paganism, witchcraft, mysticism, and mythology. We thank you all for joining us once more, and welcome to the Greyhorn Pagans Podcast. So there we go. So I'll just do like a quick, a quick intro, yeah, and then uh, and then we'll get down to it. It'll be f- very flow. We'll just go with the flow. And we'll just see what happens and what comes up. Awesome. So welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome to another wonderful chat with another wonderful soul from around the world. Um, and we've got Stein Falks here, who is uh, a pagan. He is living in Denmark, I do believe. The Netherlands. Netherlands. Sorry, Denmark, Netherlands. I always get it. I always get it wrong. <laughs> Netherlands. Um, and yeah, so I thought it would be really good to have you on board for a chat. And we've already had uh, Franklin the Shaman on. So we've covered shamanism. Um, or we've had a really long conversation with him. And and I know we've we've connected a couple of times via like the round table chats that he does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about you today. Let's talk about paganism. Let's talk about Stein Falks, where you're from and and who you are. So just give us all an introduction and then we'll get going. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for having me. Um, it's uh, about time we did a one-on-one. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm Stein. I usually go by, uh, by Stein Fox. I am from the Netherlands. I'm a uh, Germanic pagan um which means as much that i follow the uh the old european gods um i've been on the pagan path for 10 plus years now like 10 years that i actually consider myself a pagan i want to say uh like 15 years that i've been like interested 15 years that I actually started to uh to question Mm. certain things um I didn't necessarily grow up uh religiously um both my my grandparents uh or my grandparents from both sides they were religious they were Roman Catholic so Mm. I uh I did get that a bit yeah um so you know i i of course you know as you do when you grow up in that environment like you try the whole christian catholic thing um but that just it it didn't work for Mm -hmm. me i always thought church was um incredibly boring Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i mean especially you know especially as a kid if you're yeah. uh, you know if you're a little younger all you do is sit there and some guy starts talking about all the stuff that you know you know nothing about let alone that you understand what it's about mm-hmm. um the wooden benches are incredibly hard and like not comfortable at all yeah um you know you need to sit and stand and sit and stand and <laughs> just you know do as you, do as you're told <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I've I've always been, you know, so incredibly good at uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. doing what I'm being told to do. That's why I started questioning things. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, I guess the the one true hurdle for me um, back with my uh, you know my basic understanding of Christianity. It's it's funny because like through my um, you know my pagan journey, if, uh, I've come to meet people who um 
who taught me true Christianity. But uh, the one hurdle that I just, I couldn't pass was the believe or else. Mm. You know, you have to believe in me. You have to worship me or else you're just going to fucking burn for all eternity. Yeah. Um, yeah. That brought on just such a huge amount of stress. Mm. And I was like constantly, you know, watching what I say, watching what I think, watching what I do. Like I, I couldn't live a normal life because of that thought, mm. um, which is probably exactly why, you know, why that's there um, to have you so focused on that. But mm-hmm. so I like I kind of fell in a, a bit of a hole because I was like, OK, well, this is this is not for me, but I still consider myself uh spiritual uh yeah i was one of those like oh yeah i'm spiritual but not religious yeah uh <laughs> which you know is incredibly cringe but like we we all we all start somewhere mm-hmm. um and like i've always had an interest in uh in paganism you know i've i've always been a history buff always mm. liked the uh the stories of history um and, you know, if you're talking North, North European history, of course, you know, the Vikings are mentioned more than once. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, and that's, that's, that was basically my, my wake up, if you will, like the, the TV mm-hmm. show Vikings, yeah. like that awoke something in me, which, um, you know, which got me to look deeper because, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I saw the whole, you know, the whole worship aspect and the ceremonies and just the the, um, the warrior culture aspect as well. And I was like, okay, this, this, I, this, I like, this, I can associate with, because um, the whole, I mean, of course, I, I you know, I tried the, the whole love and light and negativity doesn't exist thing. Mm-hmm. Um boy that was bad yeah yeah, yeah. toxic toxic positivity it's mm-hmm. a thing mm-hmm. um and you know once the negativity returns because just because you ignore it doesn't mean that it's it's not there but like when it returns it returns all at once yeah just you know smacks you in the face like hey you thought we were gone yeah. hell no <laughs> Yeah, hallelujah so that, for, for saying that. Yeah, because there's a lot of people out there that will just say, "Oh, there's no such thing." You know, it's just your perception. It's just you. It's you know, yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, it, it definitely is is yeah, real. And it's and like it is if there. I if I just don't if I don't mind it if I don't put any energy into it, mm, it'll it stop won't. existing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which you know, is not how it works, unfortunately. No, it's it's not healthy, not healthy no. at all. No. Um so just talking about that, is is um where you are in the Netherlands, um not Denmark, <laughs> is <laughs> is it kind of a cultural thing, paganism? Is it more openly accepted within culture? Um well the Netherlands has always been a country uh, who prides itself on freedom of religion. Mm. Yet we had some vicious wars between the, the Catholics and the Protestants. Mm. Um, so openly accepted. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's not that people are, um, you know, are fighting you because you're a pagan, mm. but it's also like the Netherlands, like us as Dutchies, we're very, um, I would put that like we're 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 okay with everything. Like it's mm. it's more of a like we we really have a a you do you kind yeah. of kind like of attitude. Ac- a good acceptance of of whatever you know. Just yeah, you know, as yeah. long as you don't don't bother me with it, as long as you don't bother anyone else with it, as long as it's yeah. not you know, as yeah. long as it doesn't form a danger to anyone else. You yeah. do you. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's perfectly fine. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. 
yeah um because i just wasn't i wasn't sure because obviously northern europe you know there's there's been lots of history lots of wars lots of bloodshed yeah um and I was just one. I it was just because I don't really, honestly, I don't know a lot about paganism, but I know that there is a connection because everything connects when you when you get back to the basics. Everything connects on some on some level. So so I don't, but I don't really know much about paganism. Um, I know a little bit about like the Celtic paganism. So what's the difference between sort of Germanic and sort of so British or Celtic paganism? Um... I mean, in in its its very core, it's still uh, the same, like the it's, same. It's thing. still very much, very much the same. But it's just like really the only difference is the um, the land and the people, because you know the stories, of course, get you know get adapted by uh, or through the the land that you live on. So mm. yeah. you know the like Great Britain or the UK or like whatever countries is. Uh, still part of it seems to be less and less <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know of course the stories are going to reflect that culture and gonna are going to reflect that landscape mm. um, so that's why like especially in you know the Netherlands Germany Scandinavia like kind of that triangle mm. um, it's a lot like a very much a, a warrior culture because we've you know we always had to fight we always had to fight against nature because it gets you know really cold here and mm. like especially in the, um, the german woods for for example when it gets cold and you get lost you know mm. good luck you know yeah, you, yeah. you're yeah. gonna you're gonna need the gods to get out of that one yeah um yeah. But you know, like of course, in the in the UK, um, and especially you know the the Celtic stuff, it's more, uh, I believe, geared more towards like the the mythical creatures. You know the yeah, the Cel- I was, Celtic, I was the fairies. To, yeah, I was just about to say that it seems to be like, it seems to be for me from what I've seen and from my understanding is it. I, I suppose in some respect, it's it's like a lot like buddhism and hinduism and things like that it depends on it kind of like there's always like a a character that you kind of like worship or, or a, a deity that, that you look up yeah. to and and within the celtic uh sect of paganism you know it, like you say it's very much to do with the land the elementals um and and those sorts of energies so so it so really it, it just varies from area to area of of what that area of land connects to yeah is, is that kind of like where it comes from yeah and you know of course every pantheon has its um it's you know it has its thunder god has its god of divine wisdom has its mm-hmm. you know its beautiful goddess or beautiful god um you know the, the uh, example that i you know that i like to give is uh for example thor or Donar, as we know him here in the uh, the Germanic countries, and then in Slavic mythology you have Perun. Mm. You know, both of them are thunder gods. Both of them are incredibly strong and protectors. It's just that Thor, uh, he wears, where is it? He wears the hammer. He has mm. Mjolnir, and yeah. Perun has a great axe. Right. Okay. But other than that, like in their in their core, it's the same same energy. It's not necessarily the same god, but it's the uh, the same. Sorry, uh, it's the same uh, same energy of the um, mm. of the lands. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I just because I, I just think it would be nice to kind of because I think a lot of people when you talk about paganism, it's like when I've talked about to people about shamanism or or Wiccan or witchcraft that they always like, oh, you don't want to talk about that. Or, oh, no, that's 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 nasty sort of stuff. You know, you shouldn't be shouldn't be talking about it because it all yeah. comes under this umbrella of, of I suppose, like a cult or occult knowledge. Um, and which for me is kind of like. It's hidden. I mean, not, it's hidden wisdom, really. Does, yeah. does would you say that's kind of? Um, is that your reaction with people when you talk about paganism? Do you get that kind of like, ooh? Um, not when I talk to everyday folk. You know, when I, uh, you know, when I talk to people at 
at work about it, you know, about what uh what I what I believe and all. They're just like, I know absolutely nothing about this, but it sounds incredibly fascinating. Yeah. Um, but when I talk to um mostly it's mostly online actually that the that that discourse exists. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's like oh paganism it's bad and like all your gods are just you know demons pretending to be god like i don't even know how many times i've heard that Mm. um and that's like mostly coming from the christians of course yeah yeah Um, i was just about to say where do you you think that just comes from the religious people that are are heavily ingrained in that mentality from the yeah, like from the true dogmatic religious people who just, you know, they, they have the blinders on and mm. all they see is, well, what the, the pastor or priest or, you know, whomever tells them. I mean, those people, they usually don't even read the holy book themselves. They just mm. go by whatever the the church leader tells them. Yeah. Um, I always like to, you know, invite those people for a, um, for a discussion on, on my channel, like, okay, let's, you know, let's see, cause I, I know for sure that I know more about Christianity than, you know, more about paganism. Um, you know, maybe in some aspects, I, I know, I even know more about Christianity, true Christianity than, you know, the people actually call themselves Christians. Mm. Um, but I never get a response to it. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, they, yeah. they never accept the invitation. Uh, all they want to do is, I don't know, tell me I'm going to hell. Yeah. And yeah it's yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, th- like, depending on how I go, yeah, probably, but like, not your hell, not the, the mm. fire and brimstone hell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but more like my hell, which mm. like you guys totally ripped off and then made it into something bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Really interesting. It's but I just think it's nice to try and speak to as many people as possible to just put people's voices out there, you know, to, to make them realize that, you know, it's not I mean, I, I still get a lot of people now because obviously I, I practice Reiki and energy mm-hmm. healing and all that sort of stuff. And I still get people now that say, Oh, it's evil, it's demonic, it's dark, and all this sort of stuff. And just like, where do you get I've I've even had people that have wanted some sessions and they've said oh you're not going to put bad spirits on me are you i'm like where do people get this like from? pop culture <laughs> probably it's Just... probably pop, pop culture a lack of understanding yeah so, you know mix in some some christian dogma which still is very prevalent um mm-hmm. in the west unfortunately and yeah i think i think that's that's really it but um you know that's why it's so important like what what we are doing what mm. uh, you know what franklin's doing with his uh, with his round table yeah yeah you know to to get the knowledge out there because it's yeah. a cold knowledge now f- still for the most part mm. but you know there is already so much uh so much knowledge out there yeah you know, so many so many knowledgeable people so many great people who you know who do the work and so many people who who may be interested but are you know struggling to to find a place struggling to find Mm. like-minded people struggling to find their voice and like for those people it's important too and it's not for you know for anyone who gets the wrong ideas we're not recruiting anyone you know we're not conversing people to paganism or whatever uh you know we're we're not like that i mean we've had that done to us so we know how uh, how good it feels you know it's um it's either believe or it's your head um <laughs> i yeah. mean there, there's like there's this this incredibly famous example of a uh frisian king rat bat not up about um you know th- eventually the uh the christians made made their way uh, even all the way up north to the Frisians who are a badass people. Mm. Uh, the true Frisians still are like, they are, well, they are true heathens. They are true pagans still like the purest. Mm. Um, and 
you know, slaughtered his his entire family, of course, because, you know, they were all pagans and they believed in the wrong God and they didn't want to, you know, wanted, wanted to convert. Um, so at a certain point, you know, of course, the king, it's the king's turn. So I believe it was the either the French or the Spaniards. It's it's always one of the two. If you're talking about Dutch history, it's either the French or the Spaniards. Mm-hmm. Great people. Um, but they asked him, so are you going to convert now? So that bot, uh, that bot asked, so if I convert, if I convert, that means I'll go to heaven, right? Yes, that means you go to heaven. Will my family, will my, you know, my people be in heaven? No, they will be in hell because, you know, they didn't convert. Okay, so then, like, who are in heaven? People like us, you know, the good people. You know what? Then I would rather go to hell and be with my family again than be in heaven with bastards like you. I'm, I'd rather be dead than a slave. <laughs> and, and the crowd um, went wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then heads rolled, quite literally. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like that's that's the true that's true pagan mentality it's like you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do it just because you're you're pushing me you're pushing me you're pushing me like i'm not gonna do it i have my own beliefs Mm. yeah and i mean it eventually cost him but like here we are so many hundreds of years later still telling still telling his stories i mean we don't tell the stories of you know the one who actually did it we're telling the stories of the king the king who who stood fast. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Stood fast to his beliefs. Um, so what is, what does your day to day look like as a pagan? Is there anything that you do? Is there any rituals that you perform yourself? Um, is there anything specific um, that you get into? Yeah, there are a, a few things. Um, first of all, it, I'm, you know, I'm really um, a man of uh, of Thor. You know, I it's the one god that I um, that I associate most with, uh, which is a common thing in paganism. Like you do believe in the whole pantheon, of course, you worship all the gods, but there are a few gods that are your favorites um, that you connect most with. So, yeah, it comes back in my job. I work as a um, was a, a city guard, which is like basically security guard, but on a, uh, a citywide level, it's like one mm. step below a police officer. Right. Um, so my job is really to well, protect and keep up the, uh, keep up the rules, keep up the laws. Um, I train jujitsu, uh, so martial arts, which, mm. you know, as a man of Thor, you have to do some physical exercise. Mm-hmm. Because Thor, you know, he is the strongest, he is the most powerful. So, you know, you have quite a standard to live up to. Yeah. Um, and other than that, like rituals, yeah, I like to do um moon rituals together with my uh with my wife. Um mm. but she's like she's more of a more of a witch, although um has been connecting with uh Freya, the goddess of love, a lot. Mm. Um but other than that i mean rituals they're not they don't have to necessarily be a uh a religious thing i mean my morning ritual is i get out of bed i feed my cat i put on i put on my coffee and i take a shower and after my shower coffee is ready and i make my breakfast Mm. and i do that or you know at least try to do that every day that's how I get my day started, yeah. which in itself really is a ritual because yeah, you're doing absolutely. the same thing because, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, that that is how you can get your day started in a way that you want. If you do this, if you do that in that order, then it's going to be a good day. Yeah. 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 And it creates that sort of daily discipline doesn't it as well you know that's the that's the discipline that you follow each and every day it keeps everything in structure 
and and I've often find like I'm exactly the same on the morning. I I have like a set routine of what I do. If I don't do like my meditation, if I don't do any self healing with Reiki or anything like that, it just throws my whole day slightly out of out of whack. Um. So yeah, and I think I think a lot of people think that a ritual has to be like under the moon and with a with a cauldron and uh, and like a goat's yeah. head and all this sort of stuff you know but dancing actual, naked in the moonlight absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know a ritual is just it's just a process it's a daily thing that we do every every single day and and most people aren't aware that we do these things as and they, they wouldn't call it ritual it's just kind of part of getting up or whatever um it's just their daily process i suppose yeah i mean you know, they're, they're morning rituals still, like even the, the people who don't necessarily believe like to call it their morning ritual mm. because that's, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So obviously you've also got a YouTube channel. All, I mean, I all your, all your links I'll put in the descriptions box anyway. Awesome. Um, So tell us how that got started. When did you start that up? Oof. Um, oh, that's been a while, actually. Like I, um, I record my uh, my podcast live on YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and I think I've been doing that for a good two years. Right now, okay. I yeah, started. Yeah. Oh dear, when did I start? I think like my first actual recording i think like my first actual show was the uh the first ragnarok show i started really with a um let me come to think of it i started with a round table really and call it a podcast because i brought you know a bunch of people together to mm. um to talk about ragnarok and or the apocalypse or the end of the mm. world because um you know i've seen and of course heard so many stories about the end of the world and from you know so many different people so many different cultures and they all seem to have things in common you know Mm. uh, either the same thing happened or something similar happened uh so i was like it all sounds so incredibly much the same like i know a good bunch of spiritual people pagans researchers you name it i want to bring them all together and just you know talk about like okay what is ragnarok has it already happened and you know the like the the apocalypse is it the same as ragnarok the end days or the end times in the bible it sounds a lot like ragnarok is it you know in some way similar or the same and that's really how i I got started and mm. then I started doing some um, some one-on-one stuff with uh, with different kinds of creators and knowledgeable people and all and yeah like ever since that you know that just got the ball rolling and I absolutely love doing it and there is there are a lot of topics that I uh that I tackle not necessarily just paganism. I I take Mm. in a lot of um, occult and metaphysics and esoterica. I, uh, I do that too, because it, you know, it can all be related to, uh, Mm. to paganism, if you will, because, you know, of course, paganism has its metaphysical aspect. It has its occult aspect, you know, the, the rituals, the beliefs, the, you know, it's all, you could all call it occult, you could all call it metaphysical. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's been like a good two, two and a half years now that I actually um, like really started focusing on, uh, you know, on the, um, the pagan aspect of things, the occult and really mm. on the, on the podcast. So like I said, I usually record it live on YouTube um, Mm -hmm. so that, you know, people can come in and discuss with us. I always like, I always like that. You know, I want to hear, I want to hear everyone's opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has differing opinions. Everyone has, has a different view. Everyone can relate things to different things. And I'm like, well, you know, if we do it live, 
than you know hopefully eventually um <laughs> still a small channel so you know maybe eventually people will come in and be like hey you know i got some some of my own ideas and mm -hmm. i can talk about that with my guests especially if it's about the topic why i brought them on it's like hey you know this person in chat says this what do you think about it yeah yeah that's yeah. that's very very much it's i think a lot of us are doing very much the same thing and, and i think ever since kind of like this um global kind of shift of energy that so many people have gone through yeah. it's kind of like everyone just wants to try and not just absorb information, but get information out there that people need to be aware of. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, and I think, you know, that's why we're doing it. We're all doing it for the same cause. And it's not like to just kind of like point a finger and, and, and say that, well, you must do this. And it's just, it's just knowledge. It's knowledge that people need to be aware of and it's wisdom. Yeah. You know, knowledge is power at the end of the day. It's, um, it's pointing things out and then let the people decide for themselves yeah what they yeah. do with that information you know do they yeah. see it too mm -hmm. yes well that's great you know are you going to look any further into it no okay well that's your choice yeah exactly absolutely yes yeah. and I, I like i always say in the like two two and a half years that i've been you know that i've been doing my podcast now i think i have learned more from just doing that than i ever could you know, like researching these topics mm, myself. Yeah. Or reading I mean, the it's, book, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, you know, all a very, like, basic understanding. Like, you can only get so far in, like, a one, sometimes even two-hour show. Mm. I, lose, I lose track of times. Like, so often, you know, I'll be on for, like, close to two and a half hours, and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> I should be wrapping this up. I have <laughs> other things to do. <laughs> um. But that's yeah. I mean, I can I can just get lost in that, and that's you know, it's a really good yeah. It's a really good thing for me too, because you know, I'm I'm just enjoying myself so much that I'm like, I want to keep this going. But you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like fucking four a.m. here. I, I gotta <laughs> head, I gotta head to bed. I work in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But that's you know that's that shows as well your love for what you're doing the love for what you're talking about because when you get into that thought sort of almost theater state flow time becomes irrelevant it's just like whoosh. it's like me when i'm painting or whatever or you know or doing music and, and you start and then like five hours have passed you're like yeah what the hell it feels like 10 minutes you're like where did that actually go but that's that's a really good sign that you're in a wonderful mindful place and you, you're in that flow you're just channeling, you're being creative, you're putting stuff out there that you need to put out there that, that yeah. feeds you and feeds your soul. Yeah, definitely. You know, I have that with uh with podcasting, you know, even even just the editing of the podcast, mm. you know, on a good day, I can, you know, I can I can really, you know, get in there and you know, mm. make it all all clean and find the right, right clips to add and find the right um right intro to add i've i've gonna you know i've, I've gone a bit lazy on that perhaps because i used to try to do like a uh, a custom intro for every guest mm. that i had but like eventually that was just taking up so much say, that, so that much be, time <laughs> that would be really time consuming to be able to yeah. do that yeah yeah i mean i you know i did it um, a good number of times so now i have like a whole bunch of uh of intros mm. um you know like at least dedicated to a, a topic you know like metaphysics or witchcraft or you know whatever so uh, mm. i can always use the intros again like i i have them yeah, so I, yeah. I can i can use them again yeah. but uh you know to do a custom intro for everyone else um and then you know find the music and edit it like just nice and um that's it's, it costs mm. a lot of a lot of time yeah. uh so yeah. what, I, what i do now like i have a uh, external hard drive which is i believe like three quarters of a way full already mm. um like a one terabyte hard drive and it's already three quarters of a way full just yeah you know, just with podcast stuff yeah um, see, i think i'm the same my, my <laughs> external hard drives it's getting uh it's it's on the way 
Yeah, yeah, no, I bet. Um, geez, like before, at this rate, before before the summer, I'm gonna have to buy another one. Mm, yeah. Um, like I already predicted that that like, you know, in a few years, I'm just gonna have a stack of external <laughs> hard disks just with like podcasting stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I need a bookcase for my books, and then like another case just for the for the hard drives. Um, just, just think of the transcripts you could get from them. You know, if if well, if you had the time to do that, transcribe them, and then you could actually write. Imagine the books you could write. I, you'd, be a, you'd be a prolific author. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have written a book actually. Oh, you have uh, right. Yeah, okay. and I'm I'm in the process of uh, writing part two. It's a um. Well, I I like to call it semi-fictional because the like the characters and the events uh, are fictional. They, to my knowledge, never happened anywhere else besides on the pages of my book and in my mind. Mm. Um, but it's all based on people that I know, uh, based on my my own experiences. Um, most of the uh the places or the specific places in the book are actual places mostly here in my hometown because that's what i know best of course mm -hmm. um and yeah like I'm, I'm trying to uh to write part two but like i'm also working mm -hmm. full yeah. time and doing podcasting i'm just yeah. I'm, I'm doing way too many things so but yeah. i i tr i really try to um to write like just every now and then uh you know uh, mm. small progress is still progress even if yeah, it's just absolutely even if it's just a few sentences mm -hmm. you know you still make progress so yeah 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 so what's the book called what's part one called um the pagan revival right okay. uh it's that's the uh well it's the, the working title at least uh there's yeah. a there's a whole Oh, there are so many, so, there's so much to it, but uh, just the, the Pagan Revival, uh, mm -hmm. you can find it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, right. Is it one of them ones where you can buy it off Amazon? It's kind of, kind of like pre it prints off Amazon for you. Yeah. Or is it a, yeah. 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 Uh, you can, well, you can buy it, of course, in uh, as an ebook. Yeah. Uh, and you can buy a, uh, at least on Amazon, a soft cover and hard cover. And oh, then, yeah, then Amazon prints it uh, yeah. for, well, for the customer. Yeah. Oh, that's fab. Awesome. Yeah. Self, well done. Self well done, you. Self-published. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I I love I love doing that too. I always loved writing, uh, yeah. writing stories, making up stories. So yeah, that's amazing. Well done, because you know, and, and well done for having that. Um, that determination, that discipline, you know, to, to, to bring everything into your life that you do do, you know, you, the mainstream 3d reality stuff that you do, as well as, you know, the, the writing, the podcast, the being a pagan and slaughtering things on a weekend, you know, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So well, well done for you for, for, you know, keeping that going. Cause I know how yeah. hard it can be. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's you, time consuming and um, I've had to reschedule things. Yeah. more more than once either because yeah. something came up or i double booked myself um or i went long on one show meaning that um you know i only had like 30 45 minutes on the next show uh because you know like i said i just tend to get lost in those things mm. yeah, yeah um so yeah but i mean that's that's what I really want to do. I, I'd really like to just like do podcasting and writing mm. and creating. And yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like my job. It's, you know, it's a, it's a good job. I work for, uh, I work for the city. So, mm. uh, you know, the, the pay is really good. I got a really good contract, uh, good benefits. Mm. Um, so, you know, for, for now I'm, I'm definitely, I'm set. Mm. um but if i could do like just podcasting just creating just writing i would much much rather do that yeah because yeah. i find just so much so much joy in yeah. that and i can do it on my own 
like on my own pace. There was a was a bit of a bit of a time that I had some uh like I had a lot of a lot of time and still some um well leftover income, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um so money wasn't really an issue and it was I did like two months that I could just you know, do podcasting and then like work out in the evenings or go to jujitsu in the evenings, um, mm. you know, stream and podcast and, and write and all of that. And yeah, man, that was such a good time. And I was really like, okay, yeah, this is, this really is what I mm. would like to do. Like if this can be my life, if this is how I can provide for myself, provide for my, uh, my family, you know, my wife, my kids, because you know, I have two kids as well. Mm. Um, well, yeah, two kids and a, a stepson. Um, if this is how I can do it, I would absolutely love to. And yeah. I've been, you know, I've been working on that ever since I've been trying to, uh, to grow my, my channel and my show and uh, all of that ever since. And the book is just, another another part of that it's just another yeah adventure that i've uh, thrown myself into mm. yeah i think we're all very much the way i like to think of us individually is we're all like trees you know we have this rooted grounded connection to who we actually are but the the soul essence and the creativity comes out into the branches and you just move off into so many different avenues yeah. um of self-expression um it's yeah it's it's marvelous i mean i obviously I, I like doing the music i like doing the art but obviously doing the doing the healing work the meditation all the other things and, and then obviously doing youtube as well and the podcasts and the mm-hmm. chats and you know it's 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 just a wonderful way to express yourself to put yourself out there to to find people to get knowledge to learn it's just yeah. an it's an amazing platform for for so much and for so many yeah, it it really is, you know, uh, YouTube, even with its its censorship and all of that stuff, which, you know, definitely is a thing. I've been, um, you know, some of my videos have absolutely been pushed way down the algorithm because of the stuff that I talk about in there. Because mm. I, I don't hold back on my mm. show. Like, you know, um, if you want to say something, say it. doesn't matter yeah. how you say it. Like, no, I mean... Of course, some you know, basic decency I do ask. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I like people to uh to be themselves. Mm. So express it however you feel like expressing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. like I, I try to um you know keep it real yeah. <laughs> on the on the show, like the the same with me. Like I'm I don't well, I'm I'm really not that different on the podcast than I am in real life. I mean, of course mm-hmm. I have to be, you know, a bit of a host and make it interesting and all of that, but <laughs> yeah, being you know, a celebrity. <laughs> oh God. Oh no. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> get a, get a flight to Turkey for some, you know, some influencer <laughs> for that influencer smile that Hollywood smile. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be a celebrity. I would no. absolutely loathe that. Yeah, I, that I don't f- that false reality of that they're all just stuck in. Yeah, it's uh... yeah, no thanks. I mean, that's no. it's truly a like they truly live in a different world, mm. in a different reality, and like so far attached, so far removed from you know mm. our reality. Yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, you know, like I said, I just want to be able to, you know, to do podcasting and writing and working out and do all the things that I want to do and, you know, Mm. be able to make a living of it. Yeah. That's, that's really all I ask. I don't have to be like a list Mm. celebrity or whatever, because it's, you know, it's not about me. It's about, it's about the gods. It's about the the knowledge. It's about, Mm. you know, spreading that, that knowledge. Mm. Well, keep, you know, keep living that, keep seeing it, keep imagining it, keep dreaming it, and it, and it will be so, you know, it, it's the law of physics and the law of attraction and all that sort of magical stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, keep being in there. Um, So uh, your channel is called the Greyhorn Pagans Podcast, right? Yes. So what is a Greyhorn Pagan? <laughs> 
Um, well, the Grey Horn Pagans is really uh, my own tribe. Uh, right. my, own, my own tribe of uh, of people, my own tribe of like-minded individuals. Because, um, you know, for the first thing um, I did when coming on the pagan path was try to find a group, mm. you know, trying to find a group of people who could help me, um, you know, further my understanding, who could help me learn more learn better because you know i was still new to paganism and all like i knew about the gods of course you know i had some basic basic mm. knowledge but other than that i don't know mm. so i i joined some groups uh you know first thing was the uh the asatru community which unfortunately turned very political very mm. woke right um which was a damn shame because it you know it, it really was a good group with, with a uh, a global membership really um but as soon as you like kind of turn away from the beliefs turn away from the gods and turn towards politics and um you know being a uh, like a you know part of the of the resistance being an activist and all of that you you lose me because that's mm. that's not what i joined joined yeah. for yeah um which you know like i said is a damn shame because it used to be such a such a good community mm. um i later on i joined uh or on facebook i found the Heathens of Oath and Honor, which at the start was a really good group. I have uh, learned a lot there. Uh, it unfortunately ended badly, but I'm not going to, I don't want to bash them that much because I, I truly did learn a lot there and I, you know, got a lot of freedom at first, mm. but they, uh, they wanted to go legit if you will they wanted to take it from online to you know offline uh, the right. actual the actual world mm. uh, so we needed a a front man we needed someone to be the the face of the group uh, which of course was you know the founder the oldest member the, um, the one who did the most and that immediately went to his head that immediately right inflated his ego to mm -hmm. you know major proportions um which was a damn shame and they, but uh and at the same time they were so focused on golden age vikingry so just like that few hundred years like two three hundred years that anything outside that scope anything outside that spectrum um you weren't supposed to talk about that you weren't supposed to to make posts about oh, that right. like yeah because you know of course i i brought in my wife or, or she was my girlfriend still back at the time um you know who was a witch and she brought in some of her her witchy friends mm. uh because i was like i mean it's it's a group about heathens we do have um, you know, like our our magical side of it, the, the Seder side. Mm. Um, but, you know, no, she wasn't allowed to talk about witchcraft because it had to be about Vikings and heathenry mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. Which was a damn shame. I tried to, you know, I, I made some posts and was doing some research about more uh, the more Indo-European, Indo-Aryan times, like the, well, let's call it the ancestors of our ancestors, mm. which got some good traction because, you know, of course, that's that's incredibly interesting because that's where it all came from. Um, but no, those posts got deleted as well because that's not what we're about, mm. which, you know, got me kind of questioning. And eventually I just, I decided that, okay, this is not, gonna work like you're not sticking to your own rules even you're limiting me you're limiting my girlfriend mm. i'm i'm gone 
Sorry. Probably limiting limiting the other people that were there as well, because I'm sure there was many yeah. others might might have been like wanting to talk about other aspects of it rather than I mean, just focusing in one area. There there were, you know, like I said, the um the the stuff about the Indo-Europeans, the Indo-Aryans, it it got some traction. People were interested yeah. in it, but you know, because it's not Vikings, because it's not heathen, mm. it you know, I just got a uh, a talking to. Mm. Um which, you know, I didn't understand, but, you know, uh, being new to the group and all of that, and, you know, they already were quite a, quite a click. Mm. Uh, so I left and eventually just decided, like, you know what, if I can't find a place to, to join, if I can find a group to join where I can, you know, be myself, where I can find the things that I want to find, where I can learn about the things that I want to learn, I'm just going to create my own. Mm. Like I've learned enough from all the yeah. other, you know, Viking and heathen and Asatru groups that I was in to like know how, well, at least know how not to do it. Mm. Cause that's you know, good knowledge to have too. If you know how not to do it, then, you know, you can figure out how to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that became the the tribe of the Grey Arm Pagans, and we've been ah, right. definitely going strong for well for a number of years now. We're still we're a smaller tribe, you know. We don't have thousands of members like we have um, spread across uh, a few platforms. I think we're at a few hundreds. Mm. Um, are they the same members that's in your telegram group um a lot of them are yeah yes yeah. um but i don't i want to say that like at least spread over uh let's say telegram mines maybe some yeah. other platforms we have between i want to say like 350 450 members mm. yeah um not all of them active of course some just you know like to to lurk and uh, others don't necessarily actively participate but you know it's you know it's there if they need it yeah yeah there if they yeah. want it yeah um and yeah you know eventually with the tribe came the podcast of course and like really all i have done in the terms of uh content creation you know the the podcast my book my book my channel and all mm. um it's all thanks to the tribe like the tribe really was my um my base mm. for that it's it's from the from the tribe that i could grow and help other people yeah uh, help other people grow and help other people find their their home base on which they could um, or they can, you know, fall back on if they, if they find themselves in some, some issues, find themselves in some, some trouble or whatever. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's re really, really empowering because, you know, if you've been in that situation, you've tried to look for, you know, groups that can help and then they've, they've ended up being either, to get egoic or whatever i just haven't covered this the, the the full spectrum of what you want to cover then yeah then and if anybody's into uh paganism or pagan life wants to know more about it head over to um stein's channel and your podcasts and find out um some more about paganism because it's i mean it's vast you know when i was talking to um franklin the shaman about shamanism and how pretty much everything um stems from shamanism from its roots and mm -hmm. we, were, we were covering that and you know it just and and i my opening line to him in that in that interview was was to try and um explain shamanism in as <laughs> in just like a few words you know just like a short explanation Oof. and he was just like uh and then he would do it on for like an hour and a half of trying, <laughs> trying, trying <laughs> Yeah, and and I think that's going to be the same with kind of like with paganism because there's so much to it um, yeah. that it's just it, it, you have to kind of like do your own research. You can't just say, "Oh, well, this is what it is," because there's just so much to it. I mean, I, mean, I, can, I was I was try and summarize it, but you know, it ends up being a a, a 
podcast that's still going on for like two two and a half years and yeah. i'm still i'm still finding out new things i'm still you know finding new stories or the <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> the same stories being told in a in a different way mm. um yeah yeah yeah. I mean, I've been on the path, like I said, you know, 10, 15 years, and I'm still finding out new things. I'm still learning new things. Yeah. And that's good because that means, you know, you're still humble to it and you're still willing to learn. Whereas a lot of people will think after 10, 15, 20, even maybe 30 years, will think, oh, well, I know everything, you know, and then yeah. it just, they just shut off. The ego kicks in and it just shuts off. The fact that people are open, wanting to learn, wanting to listen, wanting to explore various sec uh, sections of um, spirituality, spiritual life, and the various uh, ways of life that come into that, then, you know, it's it's just, it's it's amazing for people to be able to do that, to op be open to that. Yeah, for sure. And I, I can definitely imagine, like, especially frankly, like, what is shamanism? It goes on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like lighting the tip and it just went off. It was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because, I mean, you can't like put it into just one sentence or like yeah. one one key word you know yeah. it's like what is this okay well then like we're gonna have to talk about the history of it we're gonna have to talk about how it developed where it came from and who yeah. developed it and yeah you no know, yeah. like where they we, came from yeah <laughs> what inspired them you know their backstory and who they learned yeah. from like just i mean yeah. yeah that's that's but i find that the most interesting thing actually like not just the what is it but also where did it come from who mm. developed it who did they learn it from how did it came to be you know the the gods where did they they come from and like why is this god resembling that god so much like what's what's up with that mm. um are there any connections? Are they the same God? Just you know, going under a different name. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. So when when you like, because you talk about Thor and how you connect to Thor, the Thor, um, I suppose symbolism and belief and and the yeah. energy of Thor. Do, do you feel a frequency with that when you think of Thor? Or do, do you feel anything different physiologically when when you bring that energy in? Um. <clears throat> yeah it's that that warrior spirit that you know he he truly embodies the the um, the warrior spirit because you know he is that warrior so whenever i'm um going through some some hardship going through some difficult times i try to you know to channel that uh that thor energy when i'm you know in the gym lifting some some heavy weights i try to um you know try to connect with thor or on the mat with jujitsu it's really whenever i need to be whenever i need to be strong and that can mm. be you know mentally strong spiritually strong physically strong mm. um and i believe that's uh because i've, I've always had to well fight for everything that um that i have for everything that i am like life hasn't been Life hasn't been easy mm. for me, and I think that's why I, uh, why I am drawn uh, to Thor so much because I've always been a fighter. I've always been more, uh, more physical mm. as well. Like I like the physical aspect of things. You know, when I first um, joined the gym, because um, like we first joined a, a dojo or whatever, um, I found such relief and release mm. in that and uh jujitsu is the the one thing that's stuck like I've, I've trained a lot of different martial arts uh boxing kickboxing mma jujitsu pro wrestling even mm. uh tried my hand in that um but jujitsu is the one thing that's stuck and that became my way of meditating as well that's like on the mat is where I can just let go of everything, let go of everyday life and the worries of everyday life and just focus on mm -hmm. this one thing or focus on learning a, a new technique or focus mm -hmm. on not getting my arm snapped like a twig because somebody has me in an arm bar. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I used to train in um, Aikido years ago, and it was exactly the same. When I, when I, whenever you went into that dojo, and you were on the mat, it just everything else just like just disappeared because it was just yeah. you on the mat in that moment, you know, training and practicing. And, yeah. and putting putting your mind, putting your spirit, putting every part of your focus into it, um, to be able to to do some of the things, you know, to be able to become better, become fitter, become stronger, become faster, become more adept at, at what you want to do. So yeah, exactly. And, and especially if you're, you know, if you claim to be a a man of of Thor, then like at least lifting some heavy weights, like that's the the least thing you you know mm-hmm. you have to do. Yeah. really because like how can you you know say you're a man of the ultimate warrior god and then like do no physical training whatsoever mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah you know i'm a man of thor is you know an obese gamer <laughs> boy who likes to <laughs> like play vikings on the xbox mm-hmm. um that's yeah, yeah. that's not that's not how it goes you know and uh you know if you're a man of odin or Wotan, as we know in the germanic countries uh which i I have a connection too, but a lesser connection because he's really a uh, a god of the elites, god of the um the elite class, really. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're say you're a you know you feel that botanic spirit, it's a it's a frenzy, you know, it's and always thirsting for knowledge. And mm-hmm. uh Votan also really being a <clears throat> a left hand path kind of god, like his he didn't care how he got that knowledge. You know, the, the ends justifies the means. The knowledge justifies however I, I get that. I'm, I'm not that bad, but I am always looking for knowledge. I am always looking mm-hmm. for, you know, for wisdom of any kind. So, yeah. There, and the whole, you know, justice thing, you know, me working as a, oh, a city cop, if you will, if you will um like that's really the 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 tier aspect mm. you know the the god of justice mm. the uh the righteous god yeah. yeah there like there are so many things that um like just in daily life you are able to embody the gods or is or is the the gods their their energy um mm. you know channeling through you yeah yeah, yeah. You know, my my wife, um, Fire Faye, I she doesn't like to use her her uh, her real name online. Can't blame her. Um, but you know, she, I'm I'm not surprised she connected to uh, to Freya because Freya is really a goddess. Uh, she's a goddess of love, but also a goddess of war. I uh, I, I always love to say that her motto is Layem or Slayem. <laughs> <laughs> um which you know my wife also embodies like she she really has that that energy to her being mm-hmm. red hats definitely helps with that yeah um so yeah like the gods i mean odin is the one who who gave us life it's odin and his his brothers Vili and ve who created the first the first man and the first woman so yeah we're literally you know made by the gods the gods gave us life so of course there's a piece of us that resembles the gods mm. yeah yeah that's really interesting because that comes down to um, a really deep metaphysical thing doesn't it as well you know that's that's going into the metaphysical side of of the the energy of the of the gods that, that you're working with so that's really yeah and it it definitely becomes easier over time you know the more you the more you do it the easier it gets to uh to channel that energy to embody mm-hmm. that that energy or that's that god but you know as with everything it's it's a process mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely so well we've chatted for about an hour and we've covered various topics mm-hmm. um and we've covered paganism we've covered your po- podcast we've covered your youtube um all of your links um we'll put below i know you've got 
uh, work today as well. So yeah, um, yeah, my uh, my actual job, yeah, actually, the one that uh, the one 3D, that pays the bills, the three D yeah. one. That... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll let you go. Is there anything that you want to um, let people know about? Anyone? Anything you need to um, advertise or share before you go? I mean, if you wanna. You want to learn more about what I do. If you want to learn more about what my uh, my wife does, she has her own thing which she whispers. Um, if you want to learn more about, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I love this cat, but he is a right <laughs> nuisance sometimes. If you want to learn about more about what he does? I'm gonna I, say, I, the, the I, cat, I, the... I write and talk about him a lot. <laughs> The cat is the star of the show. <laughs> well, I call him my kitty co-host, but I guess it's his show. Uh, no, but if you want to learn more about uh, about me, about my my wife, about the Greyhorn Pagans, um, visit our website. It's www.squarehornpagans.com. Uh, everything's on there. All the links to you know what what we do, what some of our tribal members um do because you know a lot of people still you know have their own thing mm -hmm. and like, i i definitely encourage that if you have your own thing do it mm -hmm. if you want to use the tribe as a platform for that you're more than welcome um so yeah just go to our website and you'll you'll find anything and everything there really cool thank you thank you well send me all the links over i'll put them all yeah. below in descriptions box uh so people can go and check you out subscribe to stein's channel subscribe to fire fears channel as well if you want to know more about the witchy kind of stuff um but until then until the next video thank you so much for joining me today stein it's been um enlightening and sure. it's been thank very knowledgeable and um we shall catch up again soon um so yeah. thank you thank you too